Hello everybody, welcome back. Today, as promised, I will show you how to play the blues scale all over your guitar fretboard and in all keys. Now, I know a lot of you already know how to play the blues scale, maybe in one position, maybe two, but actually knowing it over the whole fretboard brings so many amazing benefits to your soloing, to your improvisation, uh, to your phrasing, and also to your chord comping skills. So it really takes it to the next level and it's really worth knowing it throughout. Also because it's such a common scale for blues, of course, but also for rock, for metal, and for many other different styles. For this video, we'll focus more on the practical side of it, also because I think so much has been done to try to fit the square peg of the blues scale into the round hole of music theory, with I think a very little success. I think it's obvious that this scale comes from popular use, from it came up from actual music making and not in a very academic setting. As a matter of fact, I think the first time this was actually codified into a music text is 1970, and we know for sure that it was in use for ages before then. Also, the minor pentatonic scale, especially in a blues context, really lends itself to receiving extra notes which sound weird on paper, but they actually sound great in use. If I may say so myself, I made a very interesting video about this not too long ago, and I link it above, and at the end of this video, you can click on it and watch it, where I keep adding these strange notes to a minor pentatonic scale, and they keep sounding great. But we should still talk about how we build it. And the basis, of course, for the blues scale is a minor pentatonic scale, to which we add one note, the blue note, which is the diminished fifth. So starting from scratch, we would have the following note. For the regular minor pentatonic scale, we have the root, in this case is C, the minor third E flat, the fourth and fifth F and G, and the minor seventh or flat seven B flat. That's the sound of the minor pentatonic scale. You've known this for a long time, I'm sure an octave higher. But now we add the blue note, which is the diminished fifth, which in the key of C would be G flat. And you'll see what it adds to it. Right? You see, it just keeps it moving, keeps it interesting, keeps it tense, but it also has a strangely beautiful sound. Also, this, you might have noticed, adds a chromatic sequence, which is not common, of course, while well, it's not even there for diatonic scales and pentatonics normally. Now, the purpose of the scale, there are many, but the most important one is that we can use it over a whole blues progression. So if we have a blues in the key of C, let's say, we have one, four, five, we have C7, F7, and G7, we can use the C blues scale over the whole thing. Now, as with every scale, not everything is gonna sound great, but it does fit. Now, let's jump right into the scale, and because we're going to cover the whole fretboard, we're gonna have to agree on how we're gonna divide it up. And uh, I'll use the caged uh, system of dividing the fretboard by pairs of roots, and the first two roots we find for C are here. And this is how the cage system works, we pair roots. And the second will be here, the third will be here, and the fourth here, and the fifth here. By the time we finish the fifth position, we are back to the same first position again, just 12 frets higher. You don't have to know any more than this because I'll give you, of course, tab. If you're my patron, you'll be able to download the full PDF. But even if you're not, you can just simply follow along here. You'll have no issues at all. And so now I'm gonna walk you through all five positions. Let's start with the first position. For the sake of simplicity, instead of playing it down here where there's an open string, I will play it up here so it's easier later to move it to other keys. And uh, let's see how we build it. So starting from the lowest note, I won't start from the root because I don't want to miss out on any note that I can play in any given position. I will start from the lowest possible note all the way up to the highest. And so we're going to start on the sixth string and we find an F on the 13th fret. That's the first note we can play. And I noticed that it's an F, so I'm right by the blues note. And so I'll use it. I play 13 F, 14 F sharp, the blue note, and then 15 G. And then we continue with 1315 on the fifth string. That's my root, my C. It's in red here in the tab. And then we have uh, 1315 again and 16 because that's where my blue note is. And then I continue with 1215 
13, 15, and the, six, uh, the first string, of course, will mirror the sixth, 13, 14, 15. Now, one thing we should discuss really quickly, which we'll find later too, is sometimes the blue note is tightly put or sits tightly between the fourth and fifth, so it doesn't make any sense looking for it anywhere. But when we get to here, you might say, well, I could play it here or I could play it here. It's true and you can pick and choose, but I will present the way I like to play them. And then you can, if you are at that level where you can make up your own positions, by all means do it. Now we're gonna move on to the second position. And for that, we're gonna work our way back to the lower frets because now there's no open strings to confuse us. And again, we're looking for the notes of the minor pentatonic scale plus the blue note, which is uh, G flat. And so we start with G here on the third fret of the sixth string. We have G and B flat and then our root C with the minor third E flat. And then right below it on the fourth string, we play three, four, five. We have our F, G flat, blue note, and G. And then three, five again. Then we have our E flat, our F, and then F sharp, and then three and six is G and B flat. You can hear it very well, right? And then we have... That's our position. For position three, we're gonna move up again to the next set of roots, which are on the eighth fret of the sixth string, C on the third fret of, uh, the fifth fret of the third string, C again, and again, the eighth fret of the first. That's our roots. And again, around them, let's build the blue scale. And it goes like this. We have B flat and C on fret six and eight. Then we have E flat, F, and the blue note G flat. You can play like this. You can switch, whatever you want. I like to slide my finger up when I'm phrasing. Sorry about that. There you go. Then we have these two strings are the same. We have uh, five and eight, and then five and eight again. Then we have a six, seven, eight. Again, the chromatic blue note and six, eight at the bottom. It, the whole thing sounds like this. Very nice. And this is a very useful one because it comes right before our classic that starts on the root, the fourth position. And for the fourth position, the roots are on the eighth fret of the sixth string, on the 10th fret of the fourth, and on the eighth fret of the first. And we'll build it now around the basic pentatonic pattern. I can go a little bit faster on this one, but I think you've all played it before. And it goes like this, 8, 11, 8, 9, 10, 8, 10, 8, 10, 11. 8-11, Sounds so beautiful, but this is the fourth position. And now for the final one, the fifth position, we're gonna move up to the 11th fret and the roots around which we'll build it are here on the 10th fret of the fourth string, C, and the 13th fret of the second, C. As you notice, every position shares the root with the previous position and the other root with the following position. And here's how we play it. We'll start on the 11th fret of the sixth string. We play 11, 13, and 14. 14 being our G flat, the blue note. Then on the fifth string, we'll play G and B flat, so 10 and 13. On the fourth string, same thing, 10, the root, and 13, the minor third. Then when we work our way down to the third string, we play three notes because that's again where the blue note is. So chromatically, we play 10, 11, 12. And then on the second string, 11, 13. And on the first string, 11, 13. If you want to add that 14 like you did in the sixth string, you can do that. The whole thing goes like this. And 
there you go. This is all five positions. Now, this is in the key of C, of course. If you follow the channel for a while, or at least for the last week, you know that I have a little series called Practice With Me that I just started. And in the second episode of it, I'll link it above, and I'll link it also at the end of the video, you can actually practice two of these positions through the whole circle of fifth, meaning that you'll practice them in all keys. And I'll refer you back to that video for the actual method of doing it, but the idea is that you can take any of these positions, let's take the easy one, there's no easy thing on the guitar, but this one, you identify the roots and you move it to whatever new key you want to play. So if I'm here on the eighth fret where my C is and I want to play in A flat or G sharp blues, I'll have to find the G sharp on this string, play the same fingering and as long as my roots are aligned to the new key, I'll be playing in the correct G sharp blues key. Now, this is easier, of course, with this position where we start from the root, then maybe something like this one, where the root is down here and you have to know where to start each position relative to the root. So in this case, I'm in C, but if I want to play, let's say in, in, um, in E, I have to be able to find my way right? And be able to play in that key. And for that, there's nothing better than the method I showed you in that practice with me video. So now before we finish, I'm going to play every single position for you from close up with tab very slowly. There's no rush. You can follow along, of course, you can slow it down here with the playback speed. You can pause it and do it at your own tempo. Whatever you need to do, just make sure you learn them. There you have it, the blue scale all over the fretboard in all five positions. I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, maybe consider liking it and subscribing. I'm really trying to hit those 40,000. So if you can give me a hand, I'll appreciate it. Also, if you'd like to join my Patreon, there's a link below. There's books, there's music you can listen to and all sorts of cool stuff. But whatever you do, I look forward to seeing you very soon on the next one. Bye-bye.